Hey everyone, today we're looking at the technical report Language Models Are Future of Learners released recently by OpenAI where they introduced their new GPT-3 model So as you may know, large-scale language models such as GPT-2 um, and various other ones have been very popular lately and increasing in size and this new GPT-3 architecture is a autoregressive language model with the huge amount of 175 billion parameters it is trained on huge amounts of web data as well as clean data and impressively it's able to achieve very good performance on a wide range of tasks um, and the authors of this paper are tra targeting in particular zero-shot, one-shot, or few-shot applications of this large-scale language model and without even fine-tuning it during the few-shot case. So it is a very long technical report, over 75 pages, going to huge amounts of detail of this new language model, how it's trained, the data, the um, and how it performs on, I think, over 42 different datasets and benchmarks. Huge amounts of analysis and results and hyperparameter details and so on and so forth. So very, very detailed report. Um, and yeah, um, we're going to go into it to the details now. First of all, I should say that the GPT-3 model is very similar to the GPT-2 model um, introduced last year. So if we go to the architectures that are tested in the paper, it's basically the same transformer architecture, um, autoregressive. Um, it's not bidirectional as some other um, language models released recently like T5 or, or BERT or BART or whatever, but it's similar to GPT-2 comes with a number of different sizes all the way from 125 million parameters to the impressive massive 175 billion parameters 96 layers embedding dimension of 12,000 and huge number of heads and so on and so forth trained in a distributed way over multiple GPUs and yeah these are different architectures the authors do experiments on all of them which is very cool because you can see how the performance changes with increase of model size the authors train those uh, architectures on uh, a kind of uh, again on the common crawl data set which is containing a huge number of web pages crawled on the internet 410 billion tokens they do um, spend a lot of time or some effort to filter this data set to make sure that none of the testing data sets for the respective benchmarks in this report are in the common crawl data set to the best um, extent possible and also for this paper they also add some clean data sets like the clean English Wikipedia two books data sets and web text two data set um, and interestingly actually during the training process they sample and construct batches from these data sets in an unbalanced way meaning that the clean latter data sets here books and Wikipedia uh, will be are, are selected more often than the potentially more raw more noisy common crawl data set can be selected up to 3.4 times more often and this is done by a weighting dose and so the training process in itself seems to be pretty sophisticated I can imagine um, obviously you need to distribute especially for the huge architecture the model over multiple GPUs in able you know, in order to, be able to, f to fit it I'm sure there's a lot of details in terms of hyperparameters and tricks that the authors needed to do to be able to do that to train the model uh, effectively and 
those are all in the appendix of the paper. I will not go through them all. Um, but probably there's a lot of interesting tricks to learn for how to make large-scale models um, work in practice. When it comes to the evaluation of these large-scale language models, um, I have to say importantly that the authors consider three main scenarios in this paper. So first of all, they don't consider any cases where you are fine-tuning the pre-trained language model on some downstream uh, tasks. Like they don't take an uh, existing, let's say, translation training data set and then fine-tune GPT-3 uh, on large, um, large number of examples. But they only consider few shot or basically low shot cases. In particular, first they have a zero shot scenario where they are presenting a task description to the pre-trained language model, such as translate the input from English to French. Then they um, present the input, for example, the English sentence. And then they ask the model to predict the translation condition on all of these input, input texts. They also have a one-shot case where they present one example English to French pair, which helps the model to get an idea of, better idea of what the task is precisely. It might be useful in particular when the, tr the task is maybe not, uh, not so easy to be uh, understood, understood just from a task description. Having an example might be helpful to the model. And then finally, you have the few shot case where they're pre you're presenting multiple examples. And in the paper, they consider all the way from 10 up to 100, depending on how many of those examples you can fit in the model context size, which is about 2,000 tokens. So moving on to some experiments, of which there's a huge amount. So just to give you an overview, maybe first of all is, let me, let me see, where's the overview? In this figure, they do a, a, a kind of aggregate, aggregate performance over all 42 accuracy dominated benchmarks using this report. And consistently, like tr one trend that they see is that the larger the language model, the higher overall accuracy over the majority of those tasks the tasks include a huge number of tasks like question answering, natural, natural language inference, um, language modeling, translation, huge number of them. I will not go into the, all of them in detail, but it seems this trend holds in general that um, the huge language model seems to be improving in overall over the um, smaller language models, for example, using only, only 13 billion parameters. Looking at some tasks like, let's say, Trivia QA dataset, you're again seeing, seeing this trend where the accuracy of the, on this task is increasing with larger number of parameters. One interesting thing that you see, one interesting trend that you see, um, which makes sense, but still it's cool to see is that, um, so you're getting a consistent improvement in the, in the one shot case over zero shot in blue here and in green respectively and even further improvement when you have the few shot case which is cool to see and in this that data set for example in some of the tasks actually it seems that uh, few shot the few shot case is able to even outperform models state of the art models fine tuned on the uh, on training data for this particular task so that's kind of quite Im quite cool right quite impressive that you're able to with this large scale pre-trained language model sometimes you're even able to get better than state of the art performance another interesting task is translation um, where you you are doing exactly exactly what i showed in the figure before having a task description and then asking the model to translate. And um, surprisingly, the few-shot GPT-3 model performs very well here. 
in particular when the target is translation from French to English it seems to be performing a bit worse when the target is, is translation from English to another language perhaps because you have the lesser French or whatever training data available but for translation to English you're getting consistently very good performance even sometimes are performing state-of-the-art supervised models which is very cool right um, in particular for French to English here getting like 4.2 blue improvement in the few shot case over state-of-the-art and I should mention that for the few shot case you are picking a few examples from a training data set and not, not the testing data set and you are composing your input like so and similarly for German to English or Romanian to English you're getting very good performance, better performance over previous unsupervised translation benchmarks in these three rows and sometimes even over state-of-the-art supervised translation models another very cool result which goes in the news I suppose a lot is on the task of news article auto-completion where you're given GPT-3 a input prompt like title, the title of a news article, subtitle uh, subtitle of a news article, a real news article and then a prompt like generate the article and then GPT-3 is supposed to come up with a full news article about the topic and there the authors do a very interesting human evaluation um, testing news articles generated by a wide range of GPT-3 architectures, small and huge ones what they see is that the, uh, uh, they ask humans actually to rate whether a news article presented to the, to the human without the human knowing whether the article is generated by, a G by GPT-3 or it's an existing article um, already written by a human um, and they find that consistently the larger language models are able to fool humans much more often and in the case of GPT-3 huge language model they're actually able to fool the humans 52% of the time which is very close to chance and this is uh, one of their impressive results it seems that GPT-3 is able to generate pretty natural te uh, text for this task you can read some examples in the technical report and they also provide some in the github repository that comes with a technical report they have some good and some bad and they have some random ones basically but um, yeah sometimes it seems to work pretty well pretty impressive so I think those are the main things that I wanted to cover and overall it seems to be a very nice technical report I would encourage you to check it out for more details, a lot of analysis, for example, is there bias in the training dataset, huge web training dataset, and can the model exploit this bias somehow to perform well on certain NLP benchmarks? Um, they try to mitigate this to a certain extent. They also have some uh, discussion of the broader impacts of the work in terms of um, can this be used for some um, negative use cases does the model have some bias for example in terms of gender or race um, and various interesting discussions like so huge appendix with a lot of examples and a lot of additional details regarding model training and so on so that is all that I wanted to cover from for today in overall um, interesting technical report Obviously, um, such large-scale language models still have some limitations and they will not work perfectly all the time. Um, they do discuss this as well. For example, still GPT-3 might have some problems modeling very long-term contexts. Obviously, this, this will be probably much better than GPT-2 or smaller GPT-3 architectures. 
but it might still be a problem and um, also some interesting future work is to come up with large-scale language models which are bidirectional similar to T5, uh, BERT and so on and so forth which might be better at um, handling long-term long contexts um, this is future work um, so that is all that I wanted to cover for today please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you next time